I know what you're thinking. I don't even have to say what's wrong with this printer right here, do I? Some of you guys are already shaking your heads. It's true, this one's got the same problem. I'm gonna show you guys how to fix this Sony video printer in less than 10 minutes. Coming up next, right here on Better Biomed. Hey guys, welcome back to Better Biomed. Today, we're gonna fix the Sony DR80MD video printer. This unit has got a typical problem that they all seem to experience, usually because of user error. You see, these guys are found on video towers all over the place, but often video towers don't require you to use the power button on the printer. The power button on the printer allows the printer to dock the print head and the print rollers so that it's ready for the next print job before it goes into sleep mode. But when you hit that power button on that video tower, it immediately kills the power to all the devices, including your video printer. And if it's not docked when it shuts off completely and loses power, you won't get the drawer out. And when you power it up, it's gonna give you an error and an alarm and you're gonna be stuck. You have a $2,200 video printer that is absolutely useless, but that's okay. We're gonna fix it right here, right now. The tools that you're gonna need are a medium to small size flathead screwdriver and a Phillips screwdriver, number two. We're gonna start out this side of the printer right here, which if you're staring at the front of it, that is the left side, the side with the power button. This is the panel that we are gonna be removing and we're also gonna be taking the front face off the drawer. So the first thing I do is I take the face off the drawer. Two Phillips screws right here on the bottom. Very carefully lift it up, set it aside. Take notice that there's a screw right here on the panel that we're gonna be pulling apart. We're gonna pull that out right now. Okay, set that one off the side. Don't lose these screws. They're a real odd thread pitch. Very difficult to find replacements. There's one more screw here on the back and the whole panel will just pop off. To make it easier, use your small flathead screw and very lightly pry up on the little tab. Now, okay, I think I got it so that we can see what's going on. There's three things that we need to be aware of. First one is gonna be your drive gear. That's gonna drive one of your rollers. The second thing that we have to be aware of is your catch pawl, which is down here. Mine's free for all right now, but sometimes it'll be bound up and you can't do this. So right here's the rear of the catch pawl and right here's the front. And then the third thing that we have to worry about is the print head itself. The print head will drop down from the bottom of the drawer and that will allow you to pull the drawer out. But that's gonna be step three. So step one, drive gear. Step two is gonna be your catch pawl. And step three is gonna be the print head. One of the first things that I like to do is get a piece of paper and fold that paper up. There we go. Doesn't have to be nice. Doesn't have to be fancy. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lower that catch pawl and I'm gonna shove that paper up in there to keep that catch pawl from going back up and engaging. The second thing that I'm gonna do is I'm going to rotate the black gear counterclockwise. If you start to feel resistance on that black gear, then you are going to stop immediately. You can see the gear starting to raise up right here. Here we go, just very carefully rotating that and it's lifted up, there you go. All right, I raised it up, it's in the upper position. Now we gotta go to step three. Step three is we have to remove this bottom pan 
you have to be careful. There's three screws on the back and two screws on the sides. Two up front. Okay, this bottom panel has got two tabs. It's just going to rotate and you're going to leave it sitting off to the side. This is your print head. Now the print head right now, you can see it's in the upper position. What we want to do is we want to rotate the black gear here to the rear. See how that wants to move like that? So we're going to rotate the gear in the direction that causes this to lower and that will allow us to remove the drawer. The gear that I'm talking about is this very large black gear right here above this little controller PCB. And we're going to rotate this black gear in the back either clockwise or counterclockwise and cause this print head to drop down. You can see I'm, I'm not really pulling on it, I'm just guiding it a little bit to make it easier for that cam gear to rotate because you want to rotate it with one finger while very lightly pulling down on the print head and that is all it takes. I'm going to put this panel back in its tabs, put the printer back down and your drawer comes right out. I'm going to go ahead and put this drawer off to the side. I'm going to flip her back over. Put the screws in this bottom pan. Pull out the paper that was holding the catch paw up. And now we're going to place the side panel back on. Matches up. It'll latch here at the bottom. And we put the two screws in. One at the front, one at the back. Alright, that's the base printer. Next is going to be the drawer. The first thing I'm going to do with the drawer is inspect it for physical damage. Make sure that your print ribbon is as tight as possible when you go to assemble it because you don't want it to bind up and you could end up doing this all over again. Next thing we're going to do is check this metal bar right here. Make sure it's not bent and make sure that it operates correctly. The users will often bend this metal bar from heaving on it and trying to pull the drawer out. I'm going to take the printer ribbon out, set it off to the side, take the paper out, remember pink to pink, blue to blue, Set it off to the side. We're going to flip the drawer upside down. Take our two screws. Reinstall the paper. Pink to pink, blue to blue. And we're going to rotate the ribbon so that it's nice and taut. And then the drawer goes back in the printer. Now there's one other thing that you have to do next. The next thing we can do is we have to power it up and let it go through its homing sequence and make sure that it doesn't say that there's another alarm or another bind in the gears. So 
So you heard a lot of clunky noises in there. That is all the gearing, the multiple motors finding their home positions. And you notice there's no alarm. The printer is back in its home position and the drawer is ready to go. So guys, I hope you like this video. I hope you guys save some money because a lot of people either throw these out, they break them or they send them in for repair. You can do it yourself and you can do it in about 10 minutes. Thanks for watching guys. I hope you all learned something because I've been doing this for years and I destroyed a couple printers just trying to figure this little process out for myself.